Howdy y'all. Um, you're fixing to watch a tragedy. <laughs> Maybe not. A failure. This will be the second part of my arrow making video. of My wood arrows. My traditional shooting arrows. My killing sticks I call them. Um, there's <laughs> going to be a third part. This thing going to end out ex exactly quite like I would planned. I don't know. I struggle. I've always admitted that. I'm never going to hide from the fact that I struggle. Blame it on me just being a dummy. Whatever. So, I hope you like the video. There's some helpful stuff in there, maybe, for some of y'all. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, I can't help it. It's probably the best I'm ever going to do. This is DW Verts, Hick Billy Outdoors. Enjoy. And sorry about the ending. Okay, so uh, next step in building the arrows. Um, what I've just done is I've marked off uh, 10 inches or so from the back of the shaft. I've masking taped that off so I have a, a place to put my spray paint for my cap dip. For the cap. Um, I forgot back in the day I used to use that big 2 inch wide masking tape because it's easier to cover a bunch of it up. For overspray, I just hadn't even crossed my mind. That worked fine. I went a few inches up. Um, I used my cresting machine to put those lines on. You don't have to do that. You do it by hand. You do all this by hand. And none of this is necessary to make a good arrow. I could have been shooting these arrows two days ago. I could have had them done and shooting them. I'm just trying to make them the way I like them. So I had to get some new brushes. I went to Hobby Lobby. Um, these will last me a long time for what little I do. Um, I had a fancy brush at one time, a camel hair brush. I wore it out. I had a couple of them, I think. I wore them out. This will be fine. I'm not trying to be extra picky. There's model car paint I've had for years from model cars to build narrows to whatever. I'll use that to do the cresting. Now, I would point out that I see right now, real quick, that this paint, I don't think you can see it, it says acrylic, acryl. You got to be careful a little bit because some paints and things don't match. I'm going to use all enamels today. I see several acrylics in there. I'll be dead gum. I hope I got enough enamels. There's an enamel. Um, I'm going to be using several different colors probably, but I'm going to use enamel. And the reason I say be careful is because if you use any acrylic paint, your final finish needs to be an acrylic finish. And where I'm using polyurethane, uh, you have to use that acrylic uh, urethane um, over that. The, the acrylic paints are water-based. They will run with this uh, polyurethane. Just pretty simple. You can mix and match the polyacrylic and the polyurethane finishes just fine. But I'm doing all mine in polyurethane, so I'm just going to use enamel. You can uh, use any kind of paint you want as long as it bonds, as long as it does what you want to do. Now, I'm just using plain old-fashioned, the cheapest Walmart spray paint they have. There's no point using any fancier. This is a white, and I'm going to go ahead and spray these cap dips. And then seriously, in, uh, oh, I'd say within an hour or so, I can, or whatever, I can go ahead and do my crests. I'll do them this afternoon. I may go ahead and finish them this evening and put another coat of finish because this paint's going to dry pretty quick. So right now I'm going to go spray paint these and we'll come back and see what this looks like. So here's uh, the results of the first coat of uh, paint. I'm going to put one more on because it's 25 on our winds outside. It went on a little thin, but that's what we're looking at right there so far. A couple notes that I haven't pointed out so far is that... Uh, before I cap sprayed these, I did run 
over them and gave them some real fine steel wool. Putting that finish on with a uh, paper towel, left a few little bubbles, a few little bitty high spots. So I just lightly, lightly sanded it. And I was thinking I do prefer that fine steel wool over sandpaper. It seems to me like it covers better. Um, it doesn't leave thin spots. But anyway, just lightly. I'll probably do that after that last coat because you don't want them little rough spots. It doesn't really hurt anything in the arrow flight, but it can be noisy drawing it on that rest. Um, and we just want them, we want them to be as nice as we can, I guess. So I'm going to let that dry 15 minutes, half hour, put another coat on. And I may crest them this afternoon. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, just time-wise, no big deal. I don't want to get in a big hurry on it. And uh, then we're going to do some cresting. We're going to make some feathers. And we're getting close to being done with them. We're at least halfway or better through the process. And it, it, I said, I enjoy this. The anal guys out there are probably freaking out over me not being specific and being picky. I don't care. <laughs> there are, I'm sure there's a lot of videos. I haven't looked. I'm sure there's tons of YouTube videos showing you how to do this better. This is my channel. This is the way I'm doing it. Okay? So... One more coat of spray paint for my dip, my cap. It's not a dip because I'm spraying it. Because it's not. And we'll see where we go from there. Thank you. So I've got my dip, my cap paint done. Two coats, plenty good. Not fancy. Good enough. I realized a little bit ago. This is the first time that I've had to do this. It's been a long time since I built any arrows. And this is a necessity. So I'm going to do a little question real quick while I'm waiting for a very disturbing video. <laughs> I just finished to, to upload to YouTube. Sad. So I get this set up. We'll do some shooting here and do some painting. So here we go. We're going to give this a shot. I haven't done this in so long. I'm not trying to be perfect. I haven't made any lines ahead of time. One thing about the crutcher though, you see how straight that arrow shaft is. It's pretty cool when you, your shaft's going to be that straight. So I'm not doing any pre-existing um, lines. I'm just painting until I'm done painting. I'm not going to try to make every arrow the same. I don't care. See how pretty that is? I'm going to come down here. I'm going to do the same thing. I did make a mark here. It'll be like a mid fledge mark. Just, just what I do. And it's that simple. That's all there is to it. Um, real quick, I'll try to do this. give you an idea how this works. I like that orange. That orange is cool. I'm going to get a smaller brush. Maybe too small, I don't know. Never used these brushes before. I'm going to do a little pinstripe action. With gold. Gold kind of goes good with anything. So, see if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to lay it up there real nice and easy. Quite get enough paint on the brush. I feel like Bob Ross. I feel like I'd be making little quiet comments about how beautiful this is. You see that? Let's go up here real quick. And truthfully, I think this paint needs to be mixed up just a little bit more. You do not have to do this. You don't have to do this with a machine. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do a little... I actually have the crest running backwards because I don't have my mount. I'm going to completely close that up. <laughs> Again, yeah, it don't matter. I'm going to go out about the same distance this way. A little bit thicker crest. I'm going to box this orange in. And then just for fun, put a couple lines right inside the orange. Just a little bit smaller line maybe. Get 
Y'all get that? Hope that showed up good enough. And that's the way you crest an arrow, and that's all I'm going to do. So, tomorrow I'll put urethane over all that again, and I'll be good to go. I mean, that's just as easy as it is. And I'm way out of practice. But again, I'm not doing this for anybody else. I'm doing this for me. That's kind of the way it comes out. Oh, you can see it bright. It just, it's my own deal. And I like orange. I like gold. So that's kind of, and I'm not going to do them all the same even. That's part of the fun. I'm going to do some different colors. So that's all there is to that. Next project will be uh, more urethane once I get them all crested. And then we'll uh, make some feathers. We're going to make feathers. Yes, we are. So hope you guys are getting a kick out of this. Okay, so we've got our arrows capped. Got them crested. It's been another day. So I'm going to put another coat of hopefully thin urethane on them with my paper towel. Just try to get a good, even, thin coat. I'll let them dry. It's a Saturday afternoon. I'll probably let them dry till Monday to make sure because the next thing I'll be putting the uh, fletchings on and the knocks, we'll want that urethane plenty good and dry before that happens. Now, a couple things I haven't said. Keep the dust off. Keep them wiped down. I've just been using a paper towel. Um, they make tack cloth. Hobby stores, Hobby Lobby have it, body shops have it. Back when I used to do these things professionally for people, I'd use that tack cloth. It pulls everything off. But you just don't want dust. Dust is, isn't your friend. We're not trying to be perfect, but still, dust makes them nasty. Another thing I hadn't told you yet is it's best to keep things warm. Um, I mean, it's, it's 80 degrees right now. It's really warm. But if your finish is warm, everything over, say, 60 degrees, it's going to go on better. It's going to dry better. Uh, humidity is an issue, but like I said, I like to keep things warm and keep things clean and dry, blah, blah, blah. So, pretty simple. So, again, I'm just going to real simply load up my paper towel with my urethane. Get a little bit on it. Now, if I... I used to do these things for real, for some people, I would have put another coat over the fletching, I mean over the uh, crest and everything first, because I just want that extra protection, I'm not worried about that for me. So again, I'm going to just put one more coat, just nice and easy, one more ought to get it done, and there's a balancing act, because it's hard not to touch it, but... I'm trying not to get a bunch of bubbles. I will rub this all down one more time with steel wool. But that's all that took. That long should have got it anymore. You're overworking it. Okay. So I'm going to get these done. And next thing we'll talk about some feathers and some fletching. Okay. So guys the next step is going to be <clears throat> getting ready to put feathers on those shafts when they're good and dry. And you can buy feathers in any kind of style you want. Cheap enough. Me, I've got this feather chopper, and I've got some full-length feathers, even though I had to go buy some white ones. Um, I do them myself. Now, my feather chopper has got rust on it. It was in a bucket, but it's got some rust. No big deal. It's not perfect. For me, it's fine. I'm having to finish cutting them out with a pair of scissors. I don't know how to film this. I don't think I can film this. I'm going to try it's going to be loud and nasty, but we'll see if we can make this happen. So I get this feather in here fairly good the way I want it. I close the block down. Try to keep it in place. Hold my fingers clear. I found it's best to hold the feather like this instead of holding on top. And a couple hits. Except for the fact that my chopper is not cutting good. That's the result. I'll, uh, I think I can get replacement blades for that, but I'm just doing this for me. So all I got to do is trim them up a little bit, and we're good to go. Animals won't care if they're not perfect. I won't care. This is poor man's way of doing this. Anyway, a good shield cut feather. So that's the way that works. So I'll be uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead right now since I'm out here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my 36 feathers. Um, I decided to go with a barred cock feather because I got a brand new package. I just opened them. Um, I'm gonna do this for the cock feather and then do two whites. It'll be good and bright, fun to watch. Um, so that's pretty simple, guys. So that'll be it for a couple days. Two days from now or so, I'll we'll put a knock on those things. Put them in a fletching jig and we'll put feathers on them and guess what happens after that. We'll go let a few of them fly. So there you go. Well, here we are a couple days later, folks, and I'm fixing to go ahead and fletch up these shafts. I've uh, just now took a fine steel wool and made one more pass down them real light. Knocky high spots of urethane off, any mis drips I may have had. I think I did pretty good this time. I will check them for straightness before I put them in a fletching jig one more time. Just to make sure, uh, keep them as straight as possible. And I probably over stress how straight they have to be. They need to be as straight as possible, but you can get away with some things. Um, I will, by the time I'm done, I'll have the best ones called out to hunt with with a broadhead. Because a broadhead and a straight arrow definitely go well together. I have some knocks, have some fledge, have some glue, and I have my... Uh, Feather jig, which this is, I have a couple of these six arrow jigs. You don't have to have that. You can buy a single feather fletching jig. You can use fletch tape or you can do them just really quick if you want. Um, I have seen guys fletch arrows with no jig at all and they come out great. Just taking his time. So I am fletching these left hand helical. The feather will make it arrow, will spin to the left. Um, that's what most people prefer. That's what I prefer as a right-hand shooter. It's pretty technical stuff. It doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to start putting these things together, and hopefully this evening sometime, uh, my back will let me. And, uh, well, I, I just hope I can maybe shoot some this evening. We'll see how this goes. So I'm going to get some of these started. So feathers in the clamps. Very small layer of glue on them. Feathers go in. To the jig, I usually push down a little bit, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, I couldn't get the glue that I'm used to getting without going online. I, mean, I looked all over town for it, and I couldn't find it. Hoping this glue is going to work. It's a Gorilla Glue derivative. Uh, we're going to try this, but I'll let it sit a few minutes. Got some chores to do, and I'll go ahead and repeat. The clamps come off, the arrows turn, another feather goes on, so such so forth, whatever. And anyway, when you get all three on, I'll let them dry. I'll put a little bit of glue on each end of the feather. And then I'll hot glue some of my judo points on a couple of them. And that'll be a finished arrow. I mean, that's how easy it is. So uh, it's entailed, but easy. And like I said, I took a little bit too far showing off for the video, I guess. So uh, I'm going to go get some chores done. I'm going to come back every 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so, even though this glue probably sits up faster than that. I will turn these. They'll turn one third, I'll put another one on, and we'll be good to go. See how this works out. Well, that was disappointing, folks. I don't know why I struggle with things other people don't. Um, the glue that I tried just ain't working. Uh, apparently, I, it doesn't say super glue on it, it's a Gorilla glue, but apparently it dries very fast. Uh, not so much for me. Um, <laughs> Those things been sitting there three hours, and uh, I can pull the knocks off like there's no glue at all. Uh, the feathers are seem to be sticking on, but it's just I don't get why I struggle with glues. I've had problems with glues on my fishing baits, on my jigs over the years. Other people don't have problems with. I know it's just me. So I'm uh, I'm ordering some of my Duco. It's what I use for years on wood arrows. It it works beyond doubt. It works on feathers and, and the knocks, and I'm not even going to mess around. So it's going to be several days, unfortunately, before I make this happen. That's disappointing. 87 degrees outside, 90 tomorrow, 88 degrees day after that. That's what they're calling for. It's freaking summertime the last week of September. Grouchy. Back hurts. I'm going to need to go fishing this week. I don't know if that's going to happen or not either, so... My work's caught up, that's a good thing, kinda. Work's never caught up. 
Um, before anybody says anything about using like fletch tight, boning fledge tight and stuff, I've tried that on wood arrows years back. I had bad mixed results. I don't need mixed results. I need perfect results. Nobody around Central Missouri carries Duco. Even the Walmart used to have a whole rack of it all the time. So I'm ordering a couple tubes of Duco and I'm going to get this done right. I'm not going to mess around with it until I get that stuff in. And that's the end of that. So there you are. Guys, y'all like this? Let me know. Maybe subscribe. Whatever. Ask questions. Make me feel like I'm doing something important here. <laughs> Even if probably I'm not. I'm Dale Verts. Thanks a lot for watching, y'all. God bless.